YouTube as it going, the Goat House is back. Today we are regrading the first round of the 2021 NFL Draft. So every first round pick after the rookie seasons for these players. Uh, so we're actually taking a look at my original grade. Right when the draft ended, day one, I graded every pick. Uh, we'll take a look at my new grade, and then we'll have rookie performance grades. I'll grade each player based on how they played. But they ma the main grade, we're grading the pick, not the player, the value of the pick. So one season shouldn't determine the overall grade of the actual pick. Kind of got to predict the future with some of these. So I do this at the end of every single season, so hopefully you guys enjoy it. I really enjoy doing it. We have all kinds of playoff content and off-season content right now. On the channel, check it out. A lot more to come. Full NFL coverage here. Like, subscribe, turn off games on. Follow our Twitter. A lot going on that Twitter. You're missing out if you're not following it. Link down below for that. Recent videos have links in, in the comments as well. Here's our Twitter. Again, a lot of updates, a lot of coaching updates, GM updates. Talking during live games. There's a super wild card Monday night football game tonight. Cardinals, Rams, looking forward to that. We'll be talking on Twitter. Um, so let's start with the first overall pick here, which was Trevor Lawrence to the Jaguars, and you see my performance grade. I don't. I was a little underwhelming this year. I expected more, uh, you know, not taking many risks, but having some games where he was a little turnover prone, some games here and there. Uh, you know, it kind of felt like, yeah, he needs the right system. He needs the right system, needs better receivers, needs a better situation. So it was a little underwhelmed by his performance this year. Uh, when I originally graded the pick, I gave an A, and I am sticking to an A. You know, I'm not going to drop this down uh, because of his performance year one, I think. And again, the main grade, we are grading the pick. We are not grading the player based off one year performance. This doesn't just drop down to whatever his performance was. Not how some people may do it that way. I don't agree with it. Uh, the main, so the main grade here, regrade, is an A uh, because I think it's the right pick. I mean, you make this pick over and over again. He was a little underwhelming this year. Maybe needs his hand held a little bit. You know, you need the right system, the right coach, you need better receivers. But this is the right pick. This is the pick you make. Uh, you know, over and over again, and I, I think I still think Trevor Lawrence has a bright future. So uh, I'm keeping the grade of the pick. At an A, the player's grade of this year, I gave him a C-. You know, I think it's a little underwhelming. Uh, moving on to the next one, second pick was Zach Wilson. Originally graded an A. We did drop it down a little bit. C- for performance grade. Uh, you know, some differences, even though a similar performance grade, the same from Trevor Lawrence. Definitely some differences from Zach Wilson. He did pick it up a little bit later in the year. But, yeah, what has me worried is the, is the ability to hit kind of the layup throws. Got to make the layup throws. Uh, which he started to do a little bit uh, as the year went on here. But, you know, it's different than Trevor Lawrence, too. You know, you kind of question the future a little bit, and I gave it a B. You know, I, st I still think Zach Wilson has a bright future. I think he fits the system. But you do question it, you know, should they have taken a different quarterback? Should should they have taken Mac Jones? Should they have taken, you know, Justin Field? Whatever you think, you know. Um, so some questions with, with Zach Wilson. I'm going to grade it a B still. I think he has a bright future. Started to pick it up a little bit later in the year. Um yeah, so I, I go with a B there. Uh, third pick was Trey Lance. A bit of a tricky one, so we don't have a performance grade. We saw him in action a little bit, just definitely not enough to grade him would not be fair. You could argue, you know, since he couldn't get on the field, since Jimmy Garoppolo is apparently outplaying him, you know, could you grade his performance based off that? I thought about it because that's not obviously not good uh, that uh, he can't really get on the field, but for an enters just want a playoff game with Jimmy Garoppolo. Uh, but that wouldn't really be performance grade. So we left that blank for now. I originally graded a C plus and what goes into my my grade right when the draft ends and right now it is more than just the player. We are not grading the player, we're grading the value of the pick. They traded away a ton to go up and get Trey Lance. Uh, I'm not making a statement on the future of Trey Lance. I think he's got a lot of upside. I think he's got a lot of talent. He definitely could be good in the future. He kind of has those traits you're looking for. I mean, what's succeeding today's NFL? But I look at the 49ers and they're a win now team. You know, they they just beat the Cowboys in the wild card round. They're pretty dangerous, especially the second half of the year. Uh, you know, they're going to put up fight with the Packers. We'll see that this upcoming weekend. You know, there it's a win now team. You know, and the Trey Lance pick was kind of like it almost felt like a rebuild type of pick or you're, you're I could understand that you're kind of getting ready for the future but every single team you don't really make an exception for any teams here every single team kind of has a window so where's that window of win now felt like they've kind of been in it since they went made that run of the Super Bowl last year they had injuries they missed out this year they're kind of in win now again I think you know 
it'll be debated. Should you have traded all that away? Should you stay put and helped your team win right now? You know, and what's the question next year? Is Lance going to be starting next year? Is be on the bench? Decisions to be made. Um, so you do question the pick a little bit right now just because of the value they put into it. I'm not doubting Lance's future whatsoever. We'll see how he, do, uh, how he does. Obviously, it's not a great sign uh, that he's backing up Jimmy Garoppolo. It's not. It's not. doesn't mean he's bad. It's just not a great sign. I think we all can agree on that. So gave it a C, and we'll see how he is in the future. Uh, Kyle Pitts is a tricky one to grade. I graded an A originally. Uh, you know, I like to pick. Kyle Pitts is a you're like a once-in-a-lifetime type of player, type of tight end. You just don't see that freak athlete. Uh, and just a top-notch player, obviously top-tier player in the draft. Performance-wise, they get a fantastic rookie year. B plus. You know, wish he was use a little more in the red zone. Um, and maybe you know, it's a guy we don't expect to drop the ball at all, but some, some drops if we're nitpicking there. But I still overall liked it. Over a thousand yards, B plus, fantastic year. Uh, it's tricky to regrade though, because but I have to. Even though I like Kyle Pitts, uh, and I kept it in a good grade. B is obviously a good grade. Um, you know, cause it, and you got to keep it there because it's a once in a lifetime type of player and they got themselves a good player, but you do come back and you kind of, you, you look at it, you know, what, what, what would you have done now? You know, do you take the quarterback of the future? Cause Matt Ryan doesn't really have, if he's still solid, still decent, doesn't really have a future. Do, do you go, do you go get the quarterback? Offensive line was a mess this year. Should you have realized, should they evaluate it properly? Should they have got an offensive lineman, you know, Slater, Sewell, etc you know uh or you know i guess it was tough to predict the ridley situation you had to get some sort of feeling on the calvin ridley situation but you know passing on jamar chase who was just a ridiculous player uh, a rare type of receiver you see him taking over uh, and you kind of went that route but more of a tight end slash move tight end receiver um you know so it's an interesting one. You kind of go back and did, did they go? They they went with the once in a lifetime type of player, a great player, but do they miss out on more of an important type of player that was also as good, if not better, in the couple of the few guys that I named there? So, definitely one you can we can discuss a lot about. You know, what should the, the Falcons have done overall? They got themselves a pretty good player, and again, a very rare one. So I still graded it at a B. Uh, yeah, Jamar Chase, we're going to give that an A+. Plus. The performance grade this year, A+. Plus. I mean, just ridiculous. He's already making his way up the list. I originally graded an A, so how I grade, you know, the day one of the draft ends, uh, the, that night ends, I grade every first-round pick the day after. Uh, we can put the original video down in the comments uh, for you guys. But And I and to get an A+, plus on you know, after draft night, you have to be, it has to be, wow, how did they get that guy insane? I didn't think that with Jamar Chase. You know, I thought that's who they should pick. That's who I thought the whole way. People were arguing me, offensive line. It made sense. Like, Jamar Chase fell to him. I kind of expected them to fall to him, to them, take him. So I gave him an A. But just rethinking about the whole thing and see what's happened and, and, and uh, the, the decision they made to take Chase instead of the offensive lineman. The offensive, a couple of the offensive linemen are great, but they have 100% made the right choice. I wonder how much they thought about it, too. Uh, and it's helping the Bengals big time right now. Just won their first playoff game in 31 years. So gave it an A+. Plus. Jamar Chase, special, special talent there. Um, so I'm glad we can confirm that that's, that's already worked out for them. Uh, next, Jalen Waddle, another tricky one. This one's tricky to grade because uh, a lot factors into this. Uh, original, uh, originally, I graded a B-. Uh, you know, I wasn't thrilled that you trade back up for Jalen Waddle and you had the third pick. You know, you kind of go away from Jamar Chase, and I was questioning Devontae Smith, Jalen Waddle, Devontae Smith. So B minus still a good grade. I like the player. He'll be good with Miami was my take. Um, just not in love with it, you know. And he had a fantastic year. You know, borderline A plus, you probably could say I gave it an A. Um, took him a tiny bit to get going, but really got going there. Fantastic ball player the Dolphins got. He's, he works well with Tua, we, we, we think, we, it looks like. Um, and that's great. So, Going to be a bright uh, talent for Miami for some time. We can definitely agree on that. Uh, and again, the performance grade was A. But it is a little tricky, though, because it's kind of what my original thoughts. But, yeah, should they have – you know, they wanted – here's my thought. They wanted a receiver. They got a very good one. But they wanted a receiver, and they kind of went with – unless – I mean, he very well could have been their highest graded receiver, but – Felt like trading back. They they knew what was happening. They knew Chase was going to go. They wanted a receiver. They kind of went to the second one there. And Jamar Ch and Jalen Waddle's not too far off from Jamar Chase, but Jamar Chase is another one of those 
rare, you know, almost once in a lifetime type of receivers. Almost. There's a lot of good receivers these days. So it's kind of like they wanted, they knew they were going for the next guy and they wanted to do that. So just an interesting strategy. So it is tough to grade. I I gave it a B plus still because they got a really good player. I, I just don't know, you know, I, I guess passing on Jamar Chase and kind of just targeting the next best guy little questionable, but I still gave it a B plus is a good grade. I still gave it that. He had a fantastic year. Just some in terms of again, something I've talked about already in this video a lot. The main grade there, the big letter grade, is we're grading the pick. We are not grading the player. I actually threw the performance grade in there this year because people were always complaining, like, how did you grade that guy based on his performance this year? Um, you know, for some reason they think that's what the, what it is. So we get a bit of everything here. But it's an interesting one to think about. A lot of these are debatable here on um, what you think they should have done. You know, do you go back, keep their original pick, take Jamar Chase? You know, how much different do the Bengals look then? It's pretty wild to think about. Uh, Penny Sewell, yeah, A, a minus is all around. I originally graded an A minus. Uh, I, I was more of a Rashawn Slater guy, even though I liked Penny Sewell. Uh, so that's why I gave an A minus. I'm not going to just completely drop your grade because you didn't take the guy I said you should take. Um, you know, cause I still like Sewell. If they didn't take the guy I said was best and they took, you know, a, or just a guy that just was off the wall, then yes. But I still like Penny Sewell a lot. Um, performance grade. Yeah. Started a little slow, but then really got go really got going. So end up kind of getting himself up to an A minus and I kept it an A minus, you know, I thought Rashawn Slater, it's only one year, but it looked like, you know, to me, it looked like I was right on who the best tackle was so far. It's only one year. It's not going to tell us for sure at not even close to for sure. Uh, but I was very high on Penny Sewell as well. So uh, this is a solid pick for the Detroit Lions here. I know some believe that he wouldn't be here at pick seven. So some pretty solid value at the same time. Um, you know, so we'll see. And they, you know, working him in at right tackle, uh, you, you know, so it is a little different than him. So very impressed there at Penny Sewell and the Lions uh, in their draft overall. Interesting one here with the Panthers. Uh, played a little bit, first couple, two or three, three, yeah, three games, uh, and then got injured, was out for the year. So not going to give him a performance grade, not enough there. Um, and I originally graded a B, and I bumped it up to a B plus, and people are probably going to be confused by that, people simming through, skimming through here. Not going to understand. Uh, but So I gave it a B originally. I like J.C. Horn a lot, was I wouldn't say I was high on him, but I, I thought he was the best corner, the best healthy corner, because you factor in Farley. Uh, but I thought he was the best healthy corner. My question here was, I thought the Panthers were on the right track before trading, before drafting J.C. Horn with their defense. Well-coached defense, uh, run a lot of cover three. They got the guys to fit that. They're very much improving. Uh, and they draft J.C. Horn, who's kind of a pure man coverage corner. And it was pretty clear they are switching to man. And I questioned a little bit, does this affect the rest of the defense? Does it affect it? So that's why they got a good player. How great is this pick, though? And I'm also not a huge take a corner in the top 10 guy. I kind of always, a lot of people disagree with me. I kind of always been that guy, unless they're Jalen Ramsey. You know, so I gave it a B for those reasons, some questions. So they go out there. Yeah, we don't get to, get to see the performance of J.C. Horn. We saw very small samples. I like what I saw. I like what I saw. But the Panthers do go from a cover three defense to more of a man defense. And uh, the rest of this defense look like they could play man. They don't They don't miss anything, uh, miss a beat playing man coverage. They may even got better. I do think it affected their run-stopping abilities a little bit. It kind of tends to happen when teams realize they're a man uh, and they keep them guessing. They don't realize it's a run or not. You run the ball. You typically you can get a little bit more yards on that um so maybe you know maybe you just got to get a little bit run, better run stoppers but uh it turns out to be uh, from what we learned from the panthers defense this year a little better fit you know and we weren't really anti-fit before it was just kind of a wait and see so i bumped it up a little bit i'm not worried about jc horn's talent at all uh hopefully he comes back strong from that from that injury there was some talk that he could come back um but they kind of had a losing season going so uh, i'm not too worried about it really so i gave it a b plus uh next one patch Sertan, another corner here uh, i gave it a b plus i kind of you know they got a good player i kind of wanted him to go quarterback uh but i did really like the fit at the same time uh so stayed at a b plus there uh, i gave him an a plus in the year was fantastic good mixture of lockdown and playmaking ability looks like a sure thing corner uh, for sure. So, so I end up bumping it up from a, a from a B plus to an A. People will you still can make that debate. Even as good as Patrick Tan is, should they have taken a, a quarterback? You know, should they have taken that quarterback to the cornerback? So I gave him an A though. Um, big piece of that that defense. It was one of the better defenses actually down the stretch. 
in, in, in football there. So uh, having a lockdown corner that can also uh, get his hands in the ball, make plays, is, is pretty big. So I gave that one an A on the regrade. Uh, Devontae Smith gave an A originally, a performance grade. You know, a little quiet, then started to heat up, and then got a little quiet again. Most of that blame I mean, to the passing offense, but it still happened. It is what it is. But I gave it a B. I was impressed with Devontae Smith when he got his hands on the ball. Uh, you know, but I still get, I still like it at A. I like Devontae Smith. He's got a bright future, very good receiver. I saw when we saw him get the opportunity, he was fantastic. It's just a matter of getting him the ball more. Uh, you know, I thought it was pretty good value. They traded back uh, as well, uh, got some picks. You know, they're in a pretty good situation. Pretty good situation this year with three draft picks right in the same range in the middle of the draft. Looks pretty good. So I like the value there. They got a good player as well. So give it an A. Uh, the Bears taking Justin Fields. Uh, yeah, performance-wise, you know, kind of in the boat with some of the other rookie quarterbacks, C-. Uh, it was He has legitimate excuses, legitimate ones. It's not going to affect how he played, though. I'm grading how he played. Uh, but uh, there's reason to believe he can play better, you know, because the legitimate excuses, which is coaching and kind of being in and out and in and out, you know, not great, you know. Uh, but in terms of the performance, yeah, what I didn't love is it kind of felt he came in and it felt like, ah, is he getting better Steelers game happens. I liked what I saw in the Steelers game, and it kind of felt like every time I saw him, he was almost getting worse. I think we're going to blame it. It's, it's not really a uh, a good showing of what Justin Fields will be in the future. I don't think he's going to get worse or anything like that. I do think it was that, yeah, being in and out, in and out, and the coaching. Um, but if I'm grading to performance, not really worried about his uh, at all about his passing ability. I did not – something that does scare me a little bit is the fumbles. That That's the one thing. I'm not really scared about anything with Justin Fields. Uh, the fumbles is the thing, though. That, that was a little – the ball security, a little, little scary, a little scary. Um, and originally originally value graded an A, uh, almost an A-plus because Justin Fields really wasn't supposed to be there at pick 11. The Bears did trade away a lot to get up there, so that factor that's kind of stopped at the value, stopped at an A-plus, kept it an A. Bump it down to an A-minus a little bit. Their draft pick looks really good that they gave the Giants right now, so they did trade away a bit, so that could be debated, I guess, more in the future on what they should have done. Uh, but at the end of the day, though, I mean, Fields, you know, he wasn't really supposed to be there. You look at, you know, where Trey Lan- a guy like Trey Lance went and where Fields went, definitely different value there of the pick. You know, Fields was, went pick three to four hours. Would he be starting right now in the playoffs? So legitimate questions there. Uh, the Bears probably do this again, and even though it's a different GM and coach, they probably do this. Actually, I guess you can't say, but it's probably something they can strongly consider again and again here. Um, so we, we give an A minus on 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 the regrade. Excited to watch what he's got in the future. Yes, we got this one. We got the val the original value grade. I gave it an A plus. Mike Parsons, I had an elite grade on. He was my number one defensive player in a draft. Uh, I'm not a draft purely off need guy. You take the best player. Everyone had cornerback in their head for the Cowboys. They took Micah Parsons. Half the world had a meltdown because some of the, a lot of the fan base too had a meltdown because they didn't get a corner. Uh, but I graded an A plus because they got the best defensive player in the draft and he ended up playing even better than I thought he would. So we get him an A plus. His performance grade A plus. So that's why you take the best uh, available players here. You can't go purely off needs. You know, if they would have got. You know, Sertan would have helped them for sure if they would have got a guy like that or uh, or J.C. Horn, whoever it may be. But uh, they got a special player, Mike Parsons. So A plus is all around there. I think we nailed that one as well as this one. A plus is all around. Rashawn Slater was my number one tackle in the draft. Uh, he was not supposed to be there at 13. On top of that, so I gave the Chargers an A plus. Uh, I thought he played very, very good. He played like uh, the best tackle in the class. He played. Uh, better than that, you know, you play like you know better than a lot of tackles in the NFL. So performance grade A plus, and we revisit it. The value is tremendous. They got themselves a franchise left tackle to protect their franchise quarterback Justin Herbert. So easy A pluses once again uh, across the board. Uh, on to the next one, Elijah Vera Tucker. Yeah, it's another one B pluses all, all all around here. Originally gave it a B plus. It was tricky because they needed this so bad, and they got a good, uh, very solid guy with a lot of upside in the in the interior. They did trade pretty far up to get him, so it's hard to grade it in the A range. You know, do you, again such a big need? They got a good player. He's going to be a good guard. You trade a lot away to go up to get a guard. Not super sexy. Give it a B plus though. 
And I thought, yeah, I thought he started getting better and better as the year went on. We get we grade, grade him a performance grade at B plus. I didn't see any reason to change it. The same things still apply. I think they got themselves a good 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 offensive lineman here for the future. Uh, to pair with uh, Zach Wilson and guys like Mackay Becton they drafted last year. So yeah, just no reason to change that one at all. I didn't see. Uh, Mac Jones, I gave another one I think we nailed here. I gave it an A+, because I was starting to believe Mac Jones would not be here. I love the fit of New England, uh, of him in New England with that team, uh, in McDaniel's offense. And, uh, yeah, he fell to him. I thought it was extremely good value. Again, I love the fit, so we gave an A+. Plus and. Um, he played he played a little better than I would expect him to, so we're keeping it at an A+. Performance grade, we're giving an A. You know, I used to, you wish it was a perfect world to get an A+. You wish there was more consistency, I guess, especially downfield, but I thought Mac Jones had a fantastic year here, so the Patriots are definitely thrilled with their draft pick there, and they probably were not expecting him to be there. Uh, 16th pick was David Collins, a tough one. I originally graded a D plus, a little bit of a surprise pick. But I remember we, the week of the draft, we started to hear that the Cardinals were really high on David Collins. Everyone's like, what? That's not right. There's no way they're taking David Collins. They ended up surprising us all and, and taking him. Um, and again, these, these grades aren't really predicting the player's talent level, well, how many years from now, you know, it, but, uh, so he could, he could, have, he could still have a bright future, obviously. Uh, but the pick isn't looking that great. And again, the future will time will tell in the future here. Um, didn't see a whole lot of him, but I still was able to grade it because he was healthy all year and he was starting the beginning of the year. I mean, they were trying to trade Jordan Hicks. That didn't happen. So they kept him on a reduced salary. They started Zayvon Collins, uh, you know, and, and then they actually had to take Zayvon Collins out of the starting lineup, put Jordan Hicks back in to be a better defense. So that's, obviously not good. He's a rookie, so it's not the end of the world, but it's obviously not great there. Um, so the performance grade up being a D minus, you still see some flashes here and there. You see some flashes, but a lot of the weaknesses of, uh, of, of what I, you know, what I said, you know, pre-draft, pre-draft, because he played such a w interesting role at Tulsa, a like defense that is not run in the NFL. A lot of time he kind of just had the f free roam ability, just sit there in the middle of the field, spy the quarterback, uh, lateral movement on making uh, making a play on the ball was a, a little bit of a concern, uh, and I thought those things uh, really really stood out. It's, it's, he's got a it's a lot different role, so we definitely got to give him time here. I just wasn't in love with the pick at the time, and nothing showed me this year that I should love it even more than I did, or should or should I should like it, you know, at all. Um, you know, so that, that's that's the tough part there. And the Cardinals are a legit team right now. I think they could help themselves out out a bit more. I kept saying they should take a receiver. I want to rip me for that. Looks, you know, it's not the weak spot of their team, but I think they could use one right now. Um, so originally gave it a D plus. We actually bumped that down a little bit. It was an odd pick at the time, and people were trying to justify it. Trying is the key word. Um, so we'll see how he does in the future. I mean, he's got talent. He's a he's a rare type of you know size combination size, physical ability, athleticism, those things. So. We'll, we'll see. And they got their they actually the Cardinals got their first playoff game tonight against the Rams. Um, we'll see if he can make an impact here. A uh, little different, you know. People bring up Isaiah Simmons, uh, d definitely different than Isaiah Simmons' situation. Isaiah Simmons was a different animal. First off, um, just a rare talent, just an elite prospect, you know. And uh, so that's different, you know. Different talent levels, as even though different draft classes, definitely different prospect evaluations, talent levels. Different, a little bit different style of player. Uh, and Isaiah Simmons, there was questions on if he fit the Cardinals 3-4 defense, and they were trying to play him strictly at inside linebacker, so they really weren't pay playing him a lot. And it was the matter of getting him in and not just sticking him in one spot at the same time, but mainly just get him in. They did that. He started to pick it up later in his rookie year, and he's been fantastic for them. Uh, Collins a little different, almost the reverse. They kind of had to take him out. You know, to to get a little better on defense, which isn't the best look. But again, playing a lot different defense than what he played in college, um, and uh, so maybe he's got to get his feet wet here a little bit. Another one, I actually bumped this one up. That might surprise a little bit. I don't people a little bit, but uh, I still don't think it was a good pick. Obviously, with the C minus, but uh, yeah, originally gave, gave it a D minus. The performance grade D plus. He's really struggled to start off. They switched him to guard. He played a little better. Still struggle a little bit, so he stays in the D range. And the reason I bumped it up though is because I I graded him and ranked him uh, as a guard, and I thought he can be a, a pretty solid guard, and I still think he could be a solid guard. I do think he still didn't play well. He definitely played better at guard than tackle. He is suited for guard better than tackle. 
uh, because he's lacking the, the quickness, which you need to play tackle these days, but he's got the run blocking ability and the power to play to, and the size to play guard. Um, so I, I do like that. You know, I do like that, but yeah, they kind of missed at the same time because they, they drafted to play tackle. Now they're like, Oh, he's playing guard. So it looks, it looks kind of worse on their evaluation a little bit, but I, I do think he could be a solid guard. I, I, I actually think he can, and that's why I graded him there, you know, so we can actually bump this up a little bit. Now that he's playing guard, uh, but still not the best outing, and it's not uh, the most appealing pick still at this time. Uh, and then we got our next pick. What was it, 18? Jalen Phillips. I love the Jalen Phillips pick. He was my second best defensive player in the draft. Uh, I didn't think he was going to be here at 18, so I gave it an A+. Plus. I thought it was kind of a yeah, kind of a wild pick for the Dolphins. Uh, performance grade A-. minus. He did break the rookie sack record for the Dolphins. He kind of had it one stretch, though. He's a little quiet early, a little quiet late, kind of in the middle, which overall was still good. Get to the quarterback that many times, shows his talent, so that's why he gets an A-. minus. I gave it an A overall. I guess we got to wait and see who, uh, if there's a new, st- I mean, there is a new stat, well, a new head coach at least, but if there's a new staff, Brian Flores is the defensive-minded guy, so next guy coming in. I think, to me, Phillips fits any defense. That's another reason why I like him a lot, but we'll see how that works there. Ended up giving an A. I think Phillips has got a bright future as long as he stays healthy Healthy there. 19, Jamin Davis. There's another one, kind of like Zayman Collins, where the week of the draft we started to hear that, hey, Washington's pretty high on Jamin Davis. Everyone's like, no, they're not taking Jamin Davis. And they take Jamin Davis. It's a little bit off the wall, but the more and more I watched Jamin Davis in the pre-draft process, I was liking him. I liked the upside in the in the freakish athletic ability the improvement you know the downside was uh he was kind of a one-year wonder Kentucky had to find his like they had to find the right role for him uh to play and so I gave it a B because I loved his upside I I, I liked the talent the last year we saw him it was just one year on tape uh you know I thought Ron Rivera being that defensive mind and putting him around all that defensive talent I thought he'd be a lot better so I gave it a B wasn't in love with the pick obviously um yeah only played about in 50 in, getting close to 60 percent of snaps per game uh and he wasn't overly effective wasn't terrible uh, so I gave him a c minus there uh and i regraded c a big thing here is they didn't really know what to do with him and that was a surprise to me ron rivera and this defense they didn't really know they're like, okay, now we got the right role with him. And here Rivera talking, we think we got, we know where we're going to put him and what his his role best, you know, is. He only had he only had one good year at Kentucky. You 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 fell in love with him. You didn't sure didn't fall in love with him any tape before that year. He was barely even on the field, um, you know. And then just having a hard time figuring out what to do with him. It's just very questionable job by the staff. Very very questionable. So uh, I think he's an upside guy though. I think he's a freak athlete. You know, these types of linebackers are taking over. So. It's just a matter of getting him in the right spot. I think he's got a future. It just doesn't look great right now. And I think that's uh, – I think it's the coaching staff's fault mainly there. So um, interesting one to, uh, I guess, keep an eye out for going forward, what they do with Jamin Davis. Uh, I do, again, I think he's got a lot of upside, though. Uh, Kadarius Tony, I graded a B. Um, you know, I like Kadarius Tony. This is around the range. I thought he would go. Did, did the Giants need another receiver? Uh, you know, and I ended up bumping up performance grade B and he didn't miss a little bit of time and they had some bad, bad quarterback play. Uh, and, uh, but so otherwise if he was in there the whole time, they had better quarterback. I'm very, very confident that performance grade would shoot up. I loved what I saw from Kadarius Tony. We didn't see an insane amount from Kadarius Tony. I saw enough to know this guy is extremely talented. He's kind of, he's a Tyree kill type player. I said that during the year and people are like, you think he's Tyree kill? idiots you know um, he's probably the one of the closest thing to to Tyree Kill his style of play and his speed his burst he's just that type of player you know um, and who knows maybe one day he can't he can become that but I, I like what I saw and it's just a matter of getting that, him staying on the field and getting that quarterback in there uh, to help him out a little bit so and then you kind of look I kind of it's that time of the year we're going in the offseason I'm starting to review uh, teams' rosters and their contracts going through each one. We're getting to that time. I've already started, and you see this, see these teams' situations. Well, I don't love the Giants' situation, honestly, but it makes a pick like this look a little better because they're they're right now they have negative cap. It's not really a big concern where they're going to be sitting with negative cap. They're going to get positive very quickly and very, uh, yeah, very very easily. But they're not going to be able to clear a ton, and like they're not going to be able to make these big moves so that's the bad news but where am i where am i getting to with this 
Uh, they may have to make an interesting decision. Uh, maybe cut a guy like Sterling Shepard, which is tough. You don't love that, um, you know, but then they have Tony in here. You know, they have the guy they caught, kind of got that guy in place for the future. And I'm not guaranteeing anything with what I just, my statement I just said. Uh, but it looks a little better here for multiple reasons. So I gave it an A minus. I think Kadarius Tony's got a bright future. I hope they get the right quarterback for him. Uh, Quiddy Pay, I gave it an A originally. I love the fit. Pretty good value. I thought he was going to be a monster in the rookie season, though. He started the year kind of beat up a little bit, uh, but then got back out there and he played. Played a pretty big role, just a little quiet for them. Was getting some pressures. He's pretty effective in stopping the run as well. Um, I thought he did an all right job. You know, you you, you wish there was more production, so we still keep it at a B minus. Uh, I just bumped down a little bit, give him an A minus. You do start to worry because not worry. I think what he pays me fine. Hence the A minus, the A grade still. Um, but they have. They've missed on some pass rush. You start to realize it in the past. Um, I don't think they were drafting the right guys, uh, but you could argue. I thought they were drafting non-fits, actually, but then you can argue maybe their development team with the pass rushers aren't doing a good job. Uh, and then they get this draft class, and I love the two guys they got from the pass rush uh, position, Quiddy Pay and Deo Odangbo, uh, and I still like it, like the future, but you know, not getting a, maybe a more production, more than the, the amount you thought. You start to, in the back of your mind, you don't count on it, but you start to wonder, you know, are they having a hard time developing these guys, even though they run a really good defense, you know. Uh, but I think Cody Pate's got a bright future. I do th- I st- still think he fits the Colts. I still like the pick, so he gave him an A- there. Uh, Caleb Farley, yeah, can't really grade the performance. He finally gets on the field, and not too long after that, he gets injured, and you just hate to see it. Uh, I originally gave it a B+. Plus. Was a tricky one to originally grade because you do have the serious injury concern. Uh, but I, I was on record saying Caleb Farley is the most talented corner in the class if it wasn't for the injury concern. Or if he's healthy, he's the most talented. I didn't end up ranking him one uh, one corner because the injury concern was there. Uh, the Titans kind of hit on with some of those guys, though. You look, I look at a guy like Jeffrey Simmons, so I was starting to trust him a little bit more. And, I mean, still it's still to be determined for sure here. Um, but overall, they got a talented guy, so I was starting to like it more and more and more. I thought about it after, right after they drafted him, so I gave it a B plus. But man, the guy coming in and getting hurt right right away, uh, it's, it's just not that's not good. You know, you don't want to predict injury in the future, but it's not a good sign. Uh, again, I think he's talented; he can bounce back from the injury. So I didn't want to drop it down too too much. Uh, but it doesn't look doesn't look that great right now, so that's unfortunate. But a talented kid, so you just wish he can stay healthy. Uh, next pick was the Vikings. I originally gave an A plus. Remember, I was you know day after the draft. I'm grading the value of the pick. The, what the Vikings do? They traded back, got a bunch of picks. While they desperately desperately needed a left tackle, they still got the left tackle that I ranked much higher than around 23. Um, so I gave him an A plus for that value reasons. Uh, performance wise, when he got on the field, he looked really, he looked really solid. You know, it was weird seeing the Vikings with a solid left tackle, and especially one for the future out there. It was, it was really promising. Um, so I gave it a B plus. If he would have played the full year, we'd probably be looking at, you know, A grade perhaps. And I stuck with the A plus because. Vikings desperately need a left tackle for a long time. I, it sure looks like they got one. And again, the value of the pick, they trade back, get picks, and somehow get a guy Dar saw it, I didn't, that none of us thought he would be a 23. So I did think the Vikings did a good job there uh, with that one. Uh, Najee Harris, the next one, was in love with taking the running back here at 24. Um, wasn't in love with it, didn't absolutely hate it, anything like that. I also thought the Steelers had more important things to take a look at. Um, so I gave it a C plus at, at the time. He had a fantastic year. Najee Harris, fantastic year. Nobody doubted him. He had a fantastic year. Like he kind of played where I thought he would play. So again, the value grade is not how I think a guy will play. It's a good example. Um, so I grade him A on the season. I gave it a B plus overall. You, I mean, he's just had such a good year that it's hard to not bump it up to around there. It just can't put in the A range because you still question it though. Were they better off paying the low for James Conner and Najee Harris got a bright, bright future, but paying the low for him and then drafting offensive linemen or trying to find a quarterback in the future or going a different route. It could be debated. At the end of the day, they got a really good player here. Uh, so we gave him a B-plus here for Najee Harris, uh, 24th overall. 25th, Travis Etienne. Can't do a performance grade. We didn't see him play a snap in a regular season. Uh, original value the uh, value grade was a D. Wasn't in love with it. And we're keeping it a D. Uh First off, though, ETN, I think, is a phenomenal talent. I think he's got a bright future. I cannot wait to see him in uh, in the Jaguars' offense. 
next year. It was we, I was just kind of upset we didn't get to see him this year. And uh, but my problem was it felt you know the way the Jaguars did it. You know they were looking for a receiver because they knew they desperately needed a receiver. They wanted Kadarius Tony or Meyer came out and said that. When they went with ETN. They said they're going to play him in a hybrid role, slot receiver, running back. And I just I just didn't love it. I wasn't I did like ETN, but I was more comfortable with him in the second round. Uh, you know, I thought Javante Williams is a better running back prospect as well. Um, I just didn't like their angle here. You know, and they had James Robinson as well. I, I didn't like their angle, and, I mean, they needed a receiver so bad. The guys couldn't get open this year, um, so they could have used one of those very good receivers that were on the board here. So, not in love with this pick, as good as the ETN could be and probably will be. It, just, it wasn't really a smart pick, I thought. Uh, next one, pick 26, Greg Newsom. Uh, yeah, I remember at the time... I thought there was a number of different routes the Browns could have went. And uh, and Newsom, as good as I said his tape was, I was worried about the durability issues too. Some minor injuries popping up, popping up, taking him off the field, taking him out of the game, you know, things like that. So and even though I thought, you know, I, in terms of the valuation, like Newsom's pretty good. So I gave it a B minus. They got a pretty good player. They got a corner here that they could use. Thought they could have couple one other another routes, a few different routes. Uh, durability issues still in that B range is a good grade. It just wasn't loving it, you know. Uh, but I definitely end up bumping this one up quite a bit. I thought he had a fantastic rookie year, a uh, and I gave him an A for that. And it looks like they got a lockdown corner duo. I mean, lockdown as a definition. These two guys, uh, Ward and Newsom, kind of just that's that's what they are. They're lockdown corners here. Um, you know, so I gave an A. One thing still applies, though. The durability issue is kind of still there. You know, you see him coming off the field, missing a couple games here and there. So that is still, that's still, I guess, a little bit of a problem. But I love the way Greg Newsom played this year. I absolutely love the way when he was on the field. You know, if he would have played the full year, uh, probably would have been be talking about an A-plus performance grade. Uh, because when he when he was on the field, I thought he played like an A plus. You know, we do factor in missing in some games there. So they got themselves a good corner there. Just hope he stays fully healthy. That's just that will remain the question. Uh, Rashad Bateman, 26th overall pick, gave it an A uh, because I thought the Ravens badly needed a receiver. But it's not all about need. But they got a guy that was pretty valuable to that 27th pick. Was Rashad Bateman kind of supposed to be there? It wasn't crazy that he was really, but. Um, so I gave it an A. Uh, performance grade, we didn't see a whole lot of him for a chunk of the year, but he really started to pick it up later in the year. I mean, he ended up having over 500 yards, and it's a pretty productive year. He was playing more snaps than any receiver on the team at, at the end of the year as well. And it's, it's not really a team that features getting the ball to the receiver as well, and they just needed some guy to open things up, you know, stretch the field out, spread the field out a little bit. Uh, but I gave it a B-, you know, some production at the end, just – wasn't overly, you know, standing out, I suppose, but still gave it a B minus. I'm gonna keep it at an A because you know they needed that receiver really bad. I remember I kept mocking receivers to the Ravens, and I don't know if it was, I think it was their fans, a lot, a chunk of their fans were like, they're not taking, they don't need a receiver. We got Duvernay, Prochet, all these guys, and I was like, no, they need a receiver pretty bad. They went and get pretty good value with Bateman. Um, so I hope everyone's happy with him and what he was showing a little later in the year. I think this offense got to feature the receiver a little bit more. Get the ball, you know, not just screen. You know, the way they do it is kind of screen pass to Hollywood Brown. Uh, you know, so I, I hope they do that. But I think Bateman's got a future. I think it's a guy that fits as well. You use him outside, inside. So um, uh, I like Bateman for them. Uh, you know, wasn't a big name rookie. I still like it a lot for them though. Hey. Uh, yeah, that's a tricky one too. Saints took Peyton Turner, which was the shocker of the first round. Uh, and I liked Peyton Turner too. I, I liked his tape, and, and and but I liked him as a late second, early third. And, and the reason for that was, well, in terms of the talent evaluation, it wasn't too much of that on why he wasn't a first rounder or you know late second, early third. I mean, the kind of relies on the get off, plays a little high sometimes. But the main thing was he had several different injuries pop up while he was at Houston, so you do worry about that. And so that, on top of the other thing, kind of weighed him down. So it was a shocking pick. Also felt like the Saints are trying to trade up for a corner, so then they're, you know, were they trying to trade back? They probably should have traded back, and then they kind of just like, all right, let's take that guy, you know. So I didn't love it based on the value because I, I liked Peyton Turner, but I graded him as a second to third guy. Um, you know, they take him early, so that's where I have to grade him there, then D minus. It's a tricky one to regrade because uh, first few games, and we can't give him a performance grade, uh, because he didn't play that much. He played more than the other guys that I didn't give a performance grade to, but I just definitely, definitely didn't see enough here. Uh, but, yeah, why it's tricky? Because the first, he started the year off pretty damn strong. You know, stopping a run, getting some pressure, and I think he only got one sack, but he only played a few games. But I was impressed with Peyton Turner and his play, and that's kind of the, what we liked about him when we saw him on tape. But 
Here comes the injuries. Here they come, and, and it's multiple of them as well. So I can grade it either way. Like in, you know, end up being the case where they shouldn't. Have, he wasn't really a first round guy, and he had the injuries, so they shouldn't have taken him, and that kind of existed there. But when he was on the field, I saw a talent. You know, I saw a talent, so I bumped it up slightly. Maybe it's a little bit of the Saints too, because Davin, they, they're pretty good at judging defensive ends. Davenport was injured early on. He ends up being pretty good when he's in there. You know, they know they know pass rush, you know, so maybe that played a little bit of a factor in bumping up a little bit. But people probably could argue I should bump it down because it ended up proving that, you know, the injuries, the multiple different injuries are, happen to be the case here. So it's a tricky one there. Uh, Eric Stokes, I uh, gave it a C-plus originally. I liked Eric Stokes. Thought he was an early second guy. We're pretty much early second. Um, you know, thought maybe if they were going to go corner, is it Asante Samuel maybe? Uh, I, but I, what I really want him to do is go receiver. I really, really want him to give him Elijah Moore. They would have got Elijah Moore. I would have gave him an A+. Um, so I wasn't in love with it at the time just because I really want him to get Elijah Moore. Um, but Eric Stokes played very well this year. And, you know, Alexander's absence as well. He played very, very well. Um, you know, so I definitely bumped that up uh, to a B plus. Another thing is Packers pretty far negative cap space going into this year. Kevin King, a free agent. Not many moves to be made. They got to make sure they seal up that other cornerback spot, and they did it uh, before it was too late there. So that looks pretty good as well. So end up bumping up to a B plus. Thirtieth pick, Gregor Russo gave it a B plus there. Performance grade B plus um, as well. And I'm gonna bump that one up actually to an A uh, because we like to fit at the time, but we see it on in action. I like to fit with the Bills. Uh, I thought you know this is this is a kind of a raw prospect. He's you know, he, he's a long, athletic. You know, he came in out of high school as this guy a receiver. What the hell is he? They move him to defensive end. He's a stick, you know, and he had some production. But we expected this guy to be a raw prospect, meaning if he would have struggled early on, it would have been okay because it's a guy you got to work with, refine his technique. Uh, but I thought he played for a raw prospect. He didn't look like one. You know, I thought he played very well, helped stopping a run, getting after the quarterback as well. So I like this for the Bills. You also factor in J Jerry Hughes' upcoming free agent, Mario Addison. Mario Addison's definitely a guy I don't think they'll be bringing him back. So they kind of needed this now and for the future as well. So that was a really good pick by the Bills here for their defense. Uh, and pretty much the same situation here. Uh, Odafe away originally gave it an A, uh, performance grade A-, minus, which is way ahead of where he's supposed to be. This is the ultimate raw prospect. This guy, this guy was expected not to do much year one, and that was going to be okay. You know, he's just got the athletic traits, not overly productive. You just got to work with them a little bit. And then you go to a team where they ask their pass rushers to rush the passer but also drop back. Uh, he played way better than expectations where he's, he's way ahead of schedule is the best way to put it. So we bumped this up to an A-plus. And I was still high on him for his upside, so I thought this was a pretty good value pick as well. Um, but it looks pretty promising because this guy, again, he was supposed to be – non-productive and that was supposed to be okay he was pretty damn productive an impact and that's fantastic so that's why we bump it up to an a plus there um, because that performance grade again he was not supposed to be anywhere near that a minus on the performance grade this year so and again i i, I would have thought that had been fine you know if he didn't do much anything this year i'd still have been like he's gonna be good one day he's gonna be good you know so uh pretty solid pick from the ravens there and the last pick was Joe Tryon. He gave it an A originally. We're gonna give we're gonna keep it an A. No reason to change it. Performance grade, you know, disappeared sometimes, B minus. But a big reason I gave it an A was, you know, not for what I expected his production to be. Uh, but this guy was a three four pass rusher that also would drop back in coverage, almost like a weird hybrid off the ball roll at the same time. So he's versatile. It's exactly what the Buccaneers need he needed. He fits their their defense in terms of an edge rusher. You have Jason Pierre Paul coming up as a free agent this upcoming year. Uh, and they like to use as many pass rushers at once, uh, you know, get creative out there. So played JPP, Shaq Bear, Joe Tryon at once, and you can and without having them all rush the passer, so to throw the team off to think you are because Joe Tryon has the experience of dropping back. So it's just such a good fit. And we saw that in action against the Eagles. That was yesterday, the wild card game. We actually saw that in action as well. So um, he's actually more of a factor than any type of stats will show uh, for them. And I think that'll be shown more here as we maybe go through the playoffs. So, um, yeah, the pick definitely made sense. I, I love the fit. It was one of my favorite fits there um, for the uh, from the first round of the draft. So that's my regrade video. Hopefully everyone understands there, mainly grading the pick, not the player. The performance grade is grading the player on the year. I'm glad we 
factor we added that because some people were either confused or just not yeah just not really understanding i guess so hope you guys enjoyed it uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments. We have all kinds of recent videos on the channel, whether it's off-season videos or playoff videos. We got them, and a lot more to come. We'll update a mock draft in the near future. We have one somewhat. You know, we have one updated last week. Uh, any recent video, I have the link down uh, pinned in the comments. Our Twitter's down there as well. Check it out. Like, subscribe, turn notifications on again. That'd be much appreciated. It's gonna do it though. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.